All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jake Elkins. I'm a graduate student at the University of Alabama. And today I'm going to be talking about the recent work that we've been doing on autonomous spacecraft attitude control using deep reinforcement learning. This work was done at the Astrodynamics and Space Research Laboratory under Dr. Rohan Sood, who is my advisor, in accordance with Dr. Clemens Rumpf, who is an aerospace engineer at Science and Technology Corporation based out of NASA Ames Research Center. So just a brief overview of what I'm going to be talking about. So the motivation, so why we studied this, a general overview of how reinforcement learning works, and I'll give you an example of some concurrent work that we did um, that we presented last month in some of the same type of, of field, and then how we simulate spacecraft attitude control and kind of how we implement reinforcement learning, and then I'll show a control example right at the end of our reinforcement learning agent. So it's pretty well agreed upon that increased autonomy in these autonomous systems are going to be essential to future human space exploration and modern machine learning is moving as a field lightning fast specifically reinforcement learning reinforcement learning has been shown to beat humans in atari in the game of go and even recently in air combat dogfighting and it the field of machine learning is kind of moving a lot faster than the field of space research currently and so it, we need people to bring that space or that machine learning research to the space industry and how do you frame a problem for a machine to understand? I think of spacecraft management systems as, as reinforcement learning, say, takes over an entire spacecraft and it controls the subsystems. Attitude control is one of those subsystems that's going to be need to be framed in a way that reinforcement learning can understand. And future work that we have planned in distributed reinforcement learning will take use of this framework that we present here. So reinforcement learning, it's actually not specific to machines. It's a generalized learning framework that was, it's biomimic, so it's nature inspired. And it involves an agent taking actions in an environment to maximize reward. And my favorite example of this is teaching my dog how to sit. So my dog is an agent and he wants to learn to maximize a reward, which is a treat. And so he does that by, in the environment, he sees me saying sit. He takes an action sit to get the reward treat. And so the dog here would be the agent, the action would be sit, the environment would be me saying sit, and the reward would be the treat. And this is actually how humans learn how to perform tasks. It's very interesting. In the natural world, the reward signal would be dopamine in our brains, and that forms reward pathways in our brains. And so this is this kind of discrete process is modeled mathematically as a Markov decision process, an MDP, in discrete time episodes. And so it's kind of a real world approximation since we obviously do deal with continuous time continuous action spaces most times, and then definitely continuous state spaces. So it's an approximation of real world dynamics, but it, it, it tends to fit really well this process modeling in how we mod typically do reinforcement learning with computers. And so some concurrent work that we did, and we, we showed this at the 2020 Astrodynamics Specialist Conference in Lake Tahoe this year, it was virtual, this was last month. Um, we showed that reinforcement learning can actually use to be derived a spacecraft attitude controller that's really adaptive. And we showed in that work that the policy was able to generalize to disturbance torques that it hadn't seen during training. So that's some really interesting. I put the citation there. Um, this is a real-time GIF render of a detumble environment that the agent actually didn't see during training. So it's a very interesting concurrent work that we did in, concor in concordance with, uh, with this IEC work. So I encourage you to check that out if this is interesting to you. So in this study, we simulate spacecraft attitude control using Euler's rotation equation. We model the spacecraft as a rigid body. And so starting at the top left, we have Euler's rotation equation. That's the moment vector m. That's actually input from the agent. And we integrate this equation using run cutter order 4 to find the value of the body fixed angular velocity at the next time step. And the way that we represent attitude in this case is using the error criterion q sub e, where e hat is the axis of rotation and the angle phi is the amount of rotation about that axis e hat. And then we again integrate q sub e dot using run cutter order four to find the value of the error quaternion at the next time step. And this is diagrammed on the right with the sub b is the body fixed frame and your principal axes, and then the sub des is the desired orientation. And so that's the, the error quaternion is the relationship between the current body fixed angular frame and your desired attitude frame. And so we modeled, we wanted to keep this kind of grounded in a real world system so that we'd be able to understand and compare our agent to what industry uses. And so to do that, we picked just a, a CubeSat, or a, excuse me, a small sat that was readily available online. And we modeled the Lockheed Martin 50 Nanosat bus. And so it's a four to six U volume Nanosat bus. And Lockheed Martin themselves report a three sigma pointing accuracy of less than 0.25 degrees. And here on the right, you see a a blender rendering of our modeled spacecraft with the body fixed principal axes labeled. 
So for our specific reinforcement learning implementation, there exists a bunch of different reinforcement learning algorithms. There's on policy, off policy, there's continuous control and discrete control. So we opted for a discrete control variant of proximal policy optimization or PPO, which is, comes from John Schulman and his OpenAI team in 2017. And here I have a, a agent diagram of how you, use, how you generate experience mini batches to train your agent. And this is included in the paper. And for the sake of brevity, I'll, I'll leave this for the user, but it's basically just generating data sets to train your neural networks on. And so reinforcement learning makes use of deep neural networks as nonlinear function approximators. And there's two functions that you need to approximate. There's your policy and your value, or your actor and your critic in this case. And the policy maps from states to actions. And then your value network is going to map a state to some measure of value that the, the implementation selects. And here we use the return of a given state, which uh, capital R sub T, and that's the sum of the discounted future rewards with that discount factor gamma, which is usually on the order of 0.99, to some time horizon capital T. And on the right here, I have a, a diagrammed example of a, of a just example hidden network or neural network with two hidden layers. So for this implementation, our state vector, we use the Eric Returnian, the time rate of change of the Eric Returnian, and then the body fixed angular velocity. The reason we do that is the Eric Returnian gives the agent where it's at. And then the time rate of change of the Eric Returnian gives the agent where it's going. And so you get with those two, you get the memoryless property that's essential to the Markov processes. And then you have that body fixed angular velocity, which is what the agent is essentially controlling through those torque vectors. And then the goal for reward, this kind of summarizes the reinforced learning implementation successes. The goal of the reward function is to numerically incentivize your desired agent behavior. And the way that we do that here because we have this intermediate reward, so it's denoted as R sub A, and we use a negative exponential kind of numerical framework. And this is really good anytime that you have a value that you want to take to zero, that you're trying to tell the agent to take to zero. And then in this case, that's the angle phi, that's the angular error. So the way this reward works is the Q sub S is the scalar part of the error quaternion. So anytime that your scalar part of your error quaternion is getting better, are getting greater, so your angular error is decreasing, you get the positive reward, and else you get a negative reward. And then your final reward, so basically we check to see if you are inside that goal error criteria that the LM50 designates, which is an angular error of less than or equal to 2.25 degrees, you get a plus nine. So that puts you at an order of magnitude higher than the intermediate reward that you would have gotten otherwise. Now order of magnitude is essential to driving agent success to getting and staying inside of that, that goal that we need it. So, and here again, we're using discrete control. So the agent can only select one torque command at each time step. And so this table is shown in our paper, but the possible agent actions at each time step, there's actually 19. And so it can only select one torque value in three different orders of magnitude. So it's a very highly constrained control problem. So training the agent that we just talked about. So we trained it for about 4,000 episodes, or 4,000 training epics, excuse me. So after about 4,000 training epics, we stopped training to, and we saw a plateau in maximization of reward. And so we, after that, we ran 5,000 simulated episodes at a 40 hertz control frequency, and we derived these, these uh, statistics for the agent. So the closest state is inside the episode when the agents lose and minimizes that angular error. Then the terminal state is just the final time step. And I want you to focus on is this, this max column here. Uh, like I said, the goal was to produce an attitude controller that had an angular accuracy of less than 0.25 degrees, and we've gotten orders of magnitude below that, so that's very, very encouraging. And so for, for just for really quickly, for a visual of how the agent performs, I have a control example, and this is a 100 degree slew about the axis that is equal parts in the first octant. So here I have a real time render uh, of the agent controlling the spacecraft in the environment at a control frequency of 40 hertz. And how this is enacted is the agent selects an action at one time step, and then it's propagated free rotation um, with no torque enacted for another five time steps. And then the simulation time step is 1 240th of a second, so that's 6 over 240, which is 40 hertz. So, so in conclusion and future work, so we, we have we suggest that RL is a feasible method for deriving, in this case, a discrete neural attitude controller. And this algorithm reward combination proved to be very effective in generating a highly accurate attitude controller. And we plan to use this framework in distributed reinforcement learning and seeing how maybe a swarm can operate and how multiple, multiple deputy spacecraft can generate interesting data for a master policy. So very interesting work planned. And like I said, I appreciate you coming and watching my presentation. If you have any questions and further discussion, if you'd like to get in contact with me, my contact info is attached. Thank you and have a great conference.